Thanks for joining us. Can you hear us okay? I can. Fantastic. Appreciate you taking the time. And thanks to all the members of the media on the call as well. We'll go straight to questions for Golden Knights General Manager Kelly McCrimmon. Today we'll start with Jesse Granger from The Athletic. Good afternoon, Kelly. Uh, we won't see the full schedule until they release it this afternoon, but uh, with a little bit of a later start in the Olympic break, we're expecting it to be a little more condensed than usual. So I'd like to get your thoughts on the condensedness of that schedule, the back-to-backs, and then also does that factor in your plans with the goalies who obviously did really well as a tandem during last year's hectic schedule? Uh, I think that uh, when you say condensedness of the schedule, um, it perhaps is more condensed than a normal schedule, but relative to last year's schedule, um, I, I don't feel it is uh, is that way at all. So uh, this year, uh, you know, I think that you're going to find there's a lot more things that uh, uh, that are working their way back towards uh, normal times. Next question today goes to Ben Goats, the Las Vegas Review Journal. Good afternoon, Kelly. Uh, with the second year of the virtual draft now, I guess just how much more is prepared or ready or experienced do you feel coming into this year's draft compared to uh, the first year of the virtual draft last year? Well, there's pros and cons, and uh, there's there's a lot of a lot of different attributes or aspects of preparation and execution that are uh, you know absolutely perfect. Doing it right here, where we're doing it in Las Vegas, of course, for us. Uh, this will be the second draft since we met as a league in an arena uh, to draft in the traditional uh, format that uh, has been used for many, many years for our own team. Uh, this is a different year than last year because last year we did uh, the draft and uh, transitioned into free agency at, uh, at uh, Rock Creek in Montana. So, um, you know, this week we've had uh, our entire amateur staff in from, uh, you know, all over the world. They arrived uh, here last week. The pro staff are all uh, in uh, Las Vegas as well. So, you know, we're set up to be able to pop from uh, one meeting uh, to the other and we'll, uh, we'll conduct the, the draft right here. So I think in terms of, uh, uh, you know, you know your, your preparation, the execution, uh, the open discussion, is, it's one thing that's so much different. Your, your list can be up on, uh, on the screen. Uh, you can have open discussion as the picks are uh, coming off the board, where uh, at a draft uh, in an arena setting, you're whispering to the person beside you who's passing that message on uh, to the person beside him. So uh, in a lot of respects, uh, this is much uh, more convenient and maybe uh, even more efficient. And then what you're losing by uh, drafting virtually is that ability to, uh, to work the floor, to have discussions with other, uh, other teams, other general managers, for your scouts to have discussions with uh, you know, people that they know from uh, the scouting calendar, the scouting season, you know, that they uh, you know, know in many cases, in, in, in a lot of cases for many years. So that's what, that's what you're missing. So, you know, it, it's pros and cons. It's uh, you know, easy, uh, easy in many respects to do it this way. And, uh, and yet there are some things that uh, uh, are sacrificed to, to draft in a virtual format. Next question for Kelly McCrimmon today goes to Justin Emerson from the Las Vegas Sun. Hi, Kelly. You guys have done a lot of uh, picking at the end of the first round the last couple of years. Obviously, you'll take that because that means that the NHL team did pretty well. But I guess what kind of strategies go into picking at the end of that first round and maybe trying to uncover some of the players that maybe aren't considered those blue chip top of the line prospects? Well, they're, they're looked, they're, they're viewed differently in, in the eyes of, uh, you know, let's say the media or, or people that have a general feel for the draft. Uh, I, I can tell you that uh, our staff are extremely excited about the, you know, the players in our wheelhouse at, uh, at 29 and then again at 35 um, you know, as you, as you touch on, uh, ideally we'll be drafting 32, uh, one year. That's where, uh, that's where you want to draft. It's a signal of a, a real successful year, but, you know, as you mentioned, we're drafting, uh, you know, third last in, in the first round, but, uh, the, the guys are really, 
um, really dialed in on the, the players that are going to be available in and around that pick. Uh, you know, this year, you know, just a general comment on the draft, which I, I believe I may have touched on earlier. Um, you know, not the same coverage for, uh, for a lot of teams on, uh, on the different regions, I think, as it went along. Uh, our staff, with the exception of Ontario, the OHL, which did not play this year, uh, our staff, uh, you know, worked, uh, worked real hard. We combined uh, the use of video with a lot of in-person viewings to get uh, a pretty good handle on all of the leagues in North America, same across, uh, across Europe. And, uh, you know, the, the, the meetings that we've had here, you know, which, uh, you know, are more, uh, you know, just, you know, drilling down on different players and having a little bit more in, in, uh, in detail discussions because we're here together as a staff, but, uh, the interviews with prospects, uh, have already, uh, you know, been completed weeks ago, uh, you know, you know, finishing our lists for the different regions was, uh, completed, uh, some time ago as well. And then, uh, you know, again, in person is where you really start to get into what it's going to look or look, look like around your pick. Next question goes to David Shane, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, Kelly. Just with all of that, just how difficult it was, and you know, watching a lot of video and things in terms of, you know, scouting. Is there maybe some market inefficiencies where if you have some more coverage in an area, you feel better about some certain players that, you know, is something that you can hopefully take advantage of in this draft? Well, that'll likely play out that way, Dave, but David, but it likely will be three or four years before you know it. That's, that's how this uh, uh, sometimes works. Uh, again, uh, to, to just sort of follow up on the comment I, I made uh, in the previous question, you, you know, I think we, I think we got increasingly comfortable, you know, the, the, the staff was really worried about, uh, you know, exactly the point you're making early on when we still didn't know if the Western Hockey League, for example, would even play. We didn't know if there would be uh, the World Under-18 Championships. We didn't know if that event would be held. So there, there was, uh, you know, certainly lots of angst uh, for uh, NHL staffs this year in terms of what it was going to play out uh, in terms of your opportunities for coverage. But as it went along, I, I, I think we were really comfortable with, uh, with the viewings uh, that we got. I, I uh, was never as concerned about it because I really, uh, and, and, and I said it to our staff uh, different times, uh, the more uncertainty or the more chaos there is around the NHL draft, the better I feel because I have that much confidence in the experience of our staff to, uh, to sort that out. So if there's uh, challenges or opportunities for competitive advantage, I think that, uh, you know, this, uh, this presents that for us. Uh, a little bit. Next question for Kelly today goes to Greg Wyshynski with ESPN. Hey, Kelly. Good to see you again. Hi, Greg. Uh, so last night, uh, Ronnie Francis said that uh, his expansion draft experience was much harder than yours uh, because teams had four years to prepare for it and, quote, weren't willing to make the mistakes that they made last time. And I was wondering if I can get your reaction to that. Well, I think Seattle uh, executed pretty well. Um, you know, it, it's interesting if you're looking at, uh, at differences uh, in terms of preparation. Uh, Vegas Golden Knights uh, came into being uh, the third week of June in 2016. George McPhee was hired on the 15th of July of 2016. And in June of 2017, we selected our team. So effectively, uh, I, I myself was hired on August 1st of uh, 2016. So effectively, we did everything we did in 11 months. So did NHL teams have more time to be prepared? Uh, you know, certainly they did. And, and yet I don't know exactly uh, what you do to prepare for an expansion franchise or an expansion draft when we're all in the winning business. I don't think we're going to sacrifice uh, the goal of winning to, you know, be uh, better prepared for an expansion draft. But I, I really think when I look at high, you know, it was interesting with the expansion draft happening. It, it, uh, you know, kind of pointed your attention towards sort of rehashing what we did and just sort of reliving it a little bit. And, 
um, you know, the, the, the one aspect that to me is so different is we had 11 months and uh, that, uh, you know, I can't tell you how hard we worked in those 11 months and at the end and everything else, our entire staff. Uh, so, um, you know, when you talk about differences, for me, that's the biggest one. But I guess to come back to the point I made uh, earlier, I think, uh, you know, Seattle had different opportunities and, and uh, capitalized, uh, I felt, quite nicely. Next question today goes to Chris Matthews, Channel 8 Las Vegas. Hey, Kelly, I was in to kind of talk a little about scheduling with that schedule being released. Las Vegas is such a unique city with the, uh, you know, with the huge and different kind of events that come here. And now it's a different city with a regular schedule. I kind of wonder how all that works. Do you just do you have to go back and forth with different dates or do you just kind of plow through and say these are our dates? Do you contact the other teams or organizations? How does the scheduling work in, in a small market like this where? It's basically you, the Raiders, UNLV, and UFC boxing, and then lots of little unique, not little, but some big, unique kind of sporting events. How does all that work in this city? Well, it's a real good question. We, uh, we could spend a long time discussing scheduling. It's, uh, you know, one of the trickiest, uh, uh, you know, aspects of, uh, of the game at the national league level. There are, are a handful of people in the NHL office whose sole job is to work with the teams on scheduling. There's a process where you are asked to submit uh, a minimum number of dates uh, for the schedulers to work with. Uh, there'll be requirements about uh, how many dates have to be submitted on each day. You have to then, uh, the, the NHL then has to put together your road trips. So you have uh, and, and, you know, asks in or requests in for what you want your road trips to look like. So, for example, when we travel uh, to the East Coast, when we start in the Pacific time zone, we, we sure want to play four games when we go. So there's a lot of different dialogue back and forth uh, that way. And uh, there's building availability really comes into play. So when you look at T-Mobile and the number of events that go on there, uh, when there's other things going on in the building, we need to make sure we're playing games. Otherwise, you end up with uh, stretches of your schedule where it's it's too busy. So uh, it's a really intricate, uh, interesting uh, process. As a team, you never have uh, the exact schedule that you requested. You never have complete control over everything that's going to go on in terms of when you play your home games, your road games. You want to try and avoid you know, lengthy homestands, you want to make sure you've got some key home dates that are really important for your organization to have games, uh, you know, when you start, when you finish, number of back-to-back -back games, uh, you know, travel, changing time zones. It's, it's uh, uh, there's so much that, uh, that goes into it. And, uh, and again, it's a process where NHL office works with each of the 32 teams and, uh, you know, they would they would tell you when they send out the schedule to all 32 teams, nobody's happy, and they uh, they probably feel they must have been pretty close if that was uh, uh, how it turned out. Time for a few final questions with Kelly today. Next one goes to Ron Futrell, Channel 8, Las Vegas. Hey, Kelly, I want to get your thoughts also on the expansion draft a little bit more with what Seattle Kraken did. They seem to take a strategy of very few – Deals. One deal really is all they did. While the Knights had multiple deals that took place to your advantage, it seems. I uh, want you to talk about, if you could, the different strategies that you guys used that they seem not to use or take advantage of. Yeah, and I'm not sure, Ron, what uh, you know discussions they had with other teams, what went into uh, the decisions that they made. You know, we weren't involved in expansion this year, so. While we did try to do some things that uh, we felt were possible because of expansion last week with the two trades that we made, we didn't have a lot of discussions with Seattle because, of course, we weren't submitting uh, a protected list. So I don't know exactly uh, what went into it from their end. I think the other, uh, the other point I would make is, um, you know, there's, there's still uh, going to be a lot of things that Seattle are involved in, whether that's free agency, whether that's... Uh, trades of players they selected, whether that's acquiring players. So, so I don't think that uh, anyone in the league feels necessarily that their work is complete. We expect that they'll, uh, you know, continue to, 
uh, you know, make, uh, make moves, add players, obviously the draft would be their focus uh, right now, as it was, uh, as it was for us, but uh, I can't really speak to that in terms of what their uh, process was. You know, we've, uh, you know, we made a number of deals. I think it was pretty well documented, uh, you know, what went into those decisions and, and uh, I guess sort of where we, uh, where we chose to go uh, with that process. So I don't uh, say that one was wrong or one was right. It was the way that we uh, felt we could best uh, maximize uh, the value for the organization as we, uh, as we uh, worked our way through the expansion draft for that inaugural team. Next, we'll go to Brian Blessing from the Vegas Hockey Hotline. Hey, Kelly, uh, just back to all the challenges you talked about, uh, seeing them less, the kids playing less, all the, all the things you've already discussed. I'm just curious, uh, compared to other years, I don't know if volatile is the word, but would you anticipate the disparity from what your draft board and other teams' draft board may look like would be wider than it would be in a normal year, that you know nuggets could fall your way and that could apply to other teams as well? Yeah, I think that's a fair question and uh, and a reasonable expectation. Um, you, you know, just just you know, on some of the comments I've already made, I, I don't think that you know variability was kind of the word that I sort of applied to it uh, midseason. I don't know that there'll be as much variability as we maybe once expected, but there is in any draft when it's a normal year. There's always a point where. Uh, the draft starts to branch off uh, into different areas where one team's list uh, might look different than another team's list. I think what you often see uh, at the top of the draft is those, you know, those top 10 picks go exactly as, uh, uh, you know, maybe not in the exact order, but as a block of 10, the top 10 picks might look the same or the top 14 picks might look the same. And then there's that point where, uh, where it veers off of uh, what your own list look, might look like or someone else's might look like. So, we felt that uh, mid-season, for example, that that might be uh, a real, uh, you know, uh, issue or, you know, just a real uh, reality, I guess would be a better word, a real reality of what the draft might look like. I think as it went on uh, with, you know, staffs, not just our own, but across the league, getting more viewings, more opportunities to, uh, to scout uh, in person, combining that with the video, uh, I think that we'll see a little less of that uh, than what we once anticipated, but likely more than a, than a normal year. That would be how I feel about that, Brian. Thanks. We'll go to David Shane, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, Kelly. I'd just like to ask you what, what communication you've had with your three UFAs, especially uh, Alec Martinez at this point. Have you been given any indication uh, on whether they intend to go to the market or, or maybe, maybe re-sign? Yeah, I think I spoke to that uh, quite a while ago, David, uh, if I remember correctly. And I believe uh, when I talked about it, I said, when there's, uh, when there's news, we'll, uh, we'll uh, you know, talk to you about it at that time. And that we weren't going to uh, talk about it uh, uh, prior to that, I, I believe, is how I answered that once uh, earlier on. Final question for Kelly McCrimmon today goes to Justin Emerson from the Las Vegas Sun. Kelly, just on the offseason in general, just kind of the philosophies that you have going into it. Last year, you were really tied up against the cap. A couple of games played with fewer than the maximum allowable skaters. I'm curious uh, if having cap flexibility so that doesn't happen again is kind of important for you, or if the fact that you guys won 40 games is kind of a testament that it didn't matter all that much. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think our people did a really good job with the cap last year. We had a situation at the end of the year where we had a handful of injuries that uh, left us with a short up, shortened lineup on a couple of occasions. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be a cap team again. And uh, that, that I can tell you and exactly what that looks like as it plays out, I guess, uh, remains to be seen and still depends on some of the, some of the decisions that we make between, uh, between now and opening day. That'll conclude today's media availability. Kelly, thanks for taking the time with us. Thank you. Thanks to all the members of the media. We'll send out full recordings shortly.